well, most anyone, I would think, with credentials as a simultaneous two-division champion and Hall of Fame inductee would be on the list of the greatest fighters of all time. Our next addition to this prestigious group, the man sitting to my immediate right, Daniel Ryan Cormier. Long after I'm gone, not only from fighting, but even from this earth, my legacy will last forever. And that's why I've done the things that I've done. A select few athletes have worn UFC gold, but to land on UFC's all-time roster takes something more. An instinct for excellence, the gift to find grace in setbacks, yes. and a drive to not only reach the peak, but to keep ascending. For simplicity's sake, all of that can be boiled down to two letters, DC. Daniel Cormier's journey started on the wrestling mats at the highest level. When the two-time U.S. Olympian shifted focus to the sport of MMA, he went 12-0 en route to his UFC debut. He stayed undefeated through 2014 before he encountered his most notable foe. John Jones became DC's professional adversary and personal antagonist. Every ounce of training you put in leading up to this fight will be a waste of your life. Their ensuing grudge remains one of the most bitter rivalries in the sport's history. But in spite of defeat, Cormier pressed on as a student, a coach, and a fighter. In 2015, he found himself back in the title picture, and he finally became the undisputed UFC light heavyweight king. It is all over! Daniel Cormier! Never content, Cormier dared himself to be even greater. UFC history, Daniel Cormier! He dethroned the longest reigning heavyweight champion in 2018, and with double champ status secured, he solidified his spot in the UFC Hall of Fame. To this day, Cormier's presence in the UFC looms large, as his commentary provides a soundtrack to the promotion's most iconic moments. The Rose! The Rose! Daniel Cormier stands unrivaled in the world of MMA, as an athlete and ambassador, an all-time great. Was there ever a doubt that Daniel Cormier would be on the all-time roster? I'm getting a little bit emotional here, champ. I mean, I'm just wondering where my walkout is. We need a walkout. Everybody else that was here got a walkout. Get over the green can carpet. I get, can I get one of those? <laughs> I mean, Joanna got one. I want Ladies one and gentlemen, of all genders and races, we now welcome to the all-time roster. <laughs> there he former is! Former simultaneous two-division champion, DRC. There we go. Daniel. That's that boy. Ryan. Mama, there goes that man. <laughs> Mama, there goes. Not a unanimous selection. Not exactly. I try to vote for myself 30 times. <laughs> as much as we like to kid, I still feel as though your body of work is a little bit underrated. I say that to you all the time. Certainly, if Mount Rushmore had a fifth slot, you're on it for me, man. One of the greatest mixed martial arts athletes of all time. You did it the right way every yeah. step of the way. Such a credit to the sport in so many different ways. And uh, I'm just happy that you get another acknowledgement. The mantle's pretty crowded, but make some room. Yeah, it was awesome. It was. I was lucky to have this career. And I'm being completely honest. You know, I left wrestling and... I really didn't know what was next. And when I started fighting, I went to AKA and I was just taken in as a family, right? I had guys like Kane Velasquez and Josh Koscheck and John Fitch and Mike Swick. It was all these great athletes. And then Khabib and them all came. We just had the great, this great formula for taking wrestlers and making them champions. So I got very blessed in my situation to begin. Started Strike Force, which they treated me so well. And then coming to the UFC and having a John Jones and having a Steep Amy Ochis and a Rumble Johnson, having all those great athletes that I got to compete against, they elevated me because they were so special. You know, your amateur wrestling career had its share of setbacks. And I think it was so gratifying for your supporters to see you not only become an undisputed UFC champion, but then you became a simultaneous two-division yeah. champion. You became the baddest man on the planet. So any of your frustrations with some things that maybe happened in Athens or other places, you made all that right. And on the biggest stage, right? I was so blessed that maybe I didn't get to, I didn't win the Olympics or win the medal, right? I got fourth and things didn't go right. The NCAA tournament, I was second. But when I had the biggest stage, I was able to not only compete, but compete well. Like, I had some performances in there where you said you were floating. 
there were times where I was in there doing things that I didn't even know I knew how to do. Like, <laughs> you're in there. It's you're like, just on. When, when you're on, when you're, you're on. When you're on, it's like, people. I, I watched Michael Jordan talk about that time he made all the three-pointers against the Blazers. That was my fight against Dan Henderson. I'm foot sweeping this dude. I'm throwing him through the air. I'm doing all kind of crazy stuff. I was like, how is this happening? It's like you're just in this, this environment, man, that you could never... Flow state. You could never appreciate anything more than that. I took a lot of pride in the competition. I really do. And I think more than anything, that's what drove me. To stand across from someone and knowing that that person's prepared and being able to conquer that was... That's why I didn't play football. That's why I wrestled. I wanted to rely on myself for the result. And if it didn't work, it was my fault. So I may not be the most objective party, but one of the reasons why I feel like Daniel Cormier's career doesn't get the total shine it deserves is because of these two head-to-head -head wins over Anthony Rumble Johnson, who at a time was the most significant power puncher in UFC history. And you submitted him twice, but the first time around to become the undisputed UFC light heavyweight champion. And uh, John Jones never beat Anthony Rumble Johnson, yeah. man. You know, we, we uh, got this fight call a little, like three weeks before the fight to go fight Rumble. And I went in there knowing that this guy was as powerful as anyone that I was ever gonna be in there with. But I just kind of did what I did. You know, one of, the, one of the talents that I had was I just had this belief that if I just kept trying, eventually I could get it done. I, I just tried really, really hard. And I think at times you can get frustrated with the guy that tries too hard or the training partner that tries too hard. I just tried really, really hard every single time I got out there and it would wear guys down. And there was a time where I had like the longest fight time in UFC light heavyweight history because it never was fast. It always took me time it was the grind. to break people down, not only beat them up like physically, but like mentally get them to the point where they're like, this dude is like not gonna keep trying. I feel like that's the wrestling mentality though. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you're in a wrestling room and you're training, it's all about just you persevering. Have to dig and dig you gotta and dig. dig. Yeah, yeah dig. I'll and get dig. you in your rib, then I'll yeah. get you on your leg, yeah. and I'll get you in the Eventually. chest, and then the face, and, then, and just keep poking at you until eventually you're like, you know what? Enough of this. This guy ain't going nowhere. <laughs> well, Dean Thomas talks a lot. When you walk into a jujitsu gym, right? Everybody's hugging you, and it's the gentle yeah. art. You walk into a wrestling mm -hmm. room. No. Like, it's tough stuff from day one. I want to talk about the year of Daniel Cormier, yeah. 2018, and your knockout of Stipe Miocic. Oh, that was crazy. I, I, uh, I went into 2018 after losing to Jones in July. I fight Volkan Uzdemir, I beat him. Same day, Dana goes, you want to fight Stipe, do the ultimate fighter. I go, sure, I'll fight him. He's not that big. And we were fighting. It was a good fight. We were hitting each other. And I, I noticed this real issue Stipe had when he would break the clinch. And I just was like, man, if I throw a right hand, I could probably catch him. And he wasn't aware of it. Now, we fought three times. And I hit him with that same shot multiple times. That time, it put him out. Don't know why. But every other time I hit him, it would rock him or something. But that time it put him out. And I can remember right after he fell, I go and I jump on him and I hit him with a couple shots. These guys today that don't get him with the extra shots, I don't understand it. Because you don't know if they get up, they might kick your ass. But I hit him and I kind of throw my hands up. There's a photo of John out of his chair. It's, it's an amazing photo between you know, him and I uh, in that moment. But I remember my son walking in and he just kind of ran into my arms because his dad was the baddest man on the planet. And that meant as much to me as holding that championship. And I, I thought it was, just, it was just tremendous to do something so special. All the issues I had before, they were dead and gone because now I was a man. It's been an incredible journey, DC, and I, I'm really honored that I got to be a part of it and fight alongside you and watch your career develop. I feel like we Thank kind of you. have a kinship in all of that, yes. you know? And uh, I don't know if there's a, another memorable moment that's going to top everything that you've done, but uh, I think it's cool that we've been able to share that side to side. Thank and the you. rivalries too, you know what I mean? Like getting yeah. through that, like persevering and really being stronger for that. I don't you think- You need those guys. That you need them. Harder girls, you need them. I needed John Jones. I needed Stipe. I needed Rumble. John Jones and I, John Jones made me a lot of money. 
As much as I don't like him, like we made a lot of money together. <laughs> Not as much as Joanna and JJ no. walking around like good, squatting. Right. She walked around right. squatting because her right. pocket's so heavy. Right. <laughs> right, I thought she was limping from leg Yeah, day. I thought she was limping. It was carrying all that cash. money. <laughs> so when my wife was giving birth to my first daughter in August of 2011, I'm sitting in the delivery room in New Haven, Connecticut, and ESPN's MMA Live is on the TV. And who's making his debut as an analyst but one Daniel Cormier? It was the best television debut. You, I have ever seen from any analyst in any sport, and now I'm obviously privileged to call you my right-hand man and my broadcast partner, but a more naturally gifted broadcaster may never cease to exist, and uh, you made a seamless transition. I appreciate it, my brother. Yeah, I've been lucky. I've been very, very lucky to have the fight career I had and then to be able to sit on this table and do what we do is tremendous. Look at that. I'm, I get the call. People say that between the three of us, this is one of the best three-man groups in all of sports, and I, I take as much pride in that. I mean, we're silly. <laughs> we're very silly, <laughs> but I take You're as much pride silly. in that than uh, as I did in fighting. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, my life, my life, my life is a fairy tale. I'm a kid that grew up in Lafayette, Louisiana with nothing. We had nothing. For me to have the life that I live today, unbelievable, right? Wait, under you made it happen, though, you know? You it's did. not by chance. You try hard. Yeah. You just try hard. But, like, uh, John, Joe, and I have fun. We, we have the best job in the world. By f I don't care. Super Bowl, World Series, hockey championships, nothing compares to being a part of a UFC championship broadcast and taking in those moments. Yeah. Because now on the other side, I was the guy wearing the belt. But to walk up to those guys and girls holding that mic when they've become a champion, nothing compares. What you were able to do in 2018, capping that year with an SB, uh, just one of the more special years in all of MMA, and it couldn't happen to a better dude. So. Yeah, it was tremendous. It was the year that everything came together for me. It's crazy. Well, congratulations, man. Thank you, my See, brother. we got to slap for I you. appreciate that, I just can't that, tell man. you where you fall. I, didn't know I was like, man, I We love you, DC, them. man. We love you. I didn't think I was on the list, Joanna. You are the most charismatic uh, <laughs> fighter in the UFC. Uh, thank you. <laughs>